guys win. Good evening and welcome. Thank you once again for attending our fifth public meeting. Let me explain the meeting format one more time for those of you that have not been with us. We'll continue with our fire presentations and then follow that by a question and answer period. We'll use the same format that we've been using in the past, following two lines down each one of the center aisles, and we'll give a little bit of time for movement of people. We're going to try to limit this to an hour again. You guys have done an excellent job the last two times with that. If you do have your cell phones with you, can you please put those on vibrate or silent, please? Just another quick reminder that the purpose of this meeting is for fire information. All of those issues that are non-fire related should be saved for a non-fire venue. I'd like to thank Rick Klein and the Performing Arts Center and his staff for providing this facility for this meeting. And with that, let's get started. Incident Commander Greg Ponson. Well, thank you, everyone. And uh, two days in a row, I'm able to stand up here and say things are better. So, yeah, isn't that great news? Yeah. So uh, um, I want to give you a few facts and figures um, here, updates to the, to the update. And uh, we're expecting our operations chief, who, who just got off the helicopter, so he's going to have the absolute latest information. I've got a couple, and here he comes now. Got a couple of uh, new maps to show you here, and uh, hopefully provide uh, the very latest information. So, um, with that, yes, we are at, a, at roughly 19,300 acres, uh, and we're still calling that 15% contained. We're up a little over a thousand people on the incident right now. Um, the 95 engines, 22 hand crews, and, and for those of you that aren't familiar with how we. Um, configure our crews. Each crew is uh, comprised of 20 uh, on-the-ground firefighters. So uh, we got a lot of horsepower out there. I was talking with Colonel Faulkner. We don't have near as much horsepower as he does today, but uh, but we're we're getting after it nonetheless. So uh, um, I, I want to show you um, a little bit of perspective on the fire. And so uh, I, I I told my my mapping people, hey, I really need something stepped up a little bit more for the briefing tonight, so I'm going to show you what they came up with. So for those that, are, that may get air sick, um, hang on to your seat. And here we go. This is uh, just uh, west of the ICP looking south into Mexico. This yellow line here is the Mexican border. So we're kind of flying down by the Coronado Memorial here. Um, and just again, we're, we're just trying to show you the, the actual fire perimeter is red. The, the burned area is not portrayed inside that. So, um, but, but on the inside of the red line is the burned area. So. Here we're uh, again on the Mexican side, coming coming back up towards uh, the um, Memorial and Montezuma Pass. That's really looking good today. This this uh, black uh, the the boundary there is pretty much cold black on the back side, except for when we start getting up a little bit higher into this country. Uh, the fire has slopped over and is kind of backing down into the timber, and that's a lot of what was coming up today. The, the smoke was from that. Here's Miller Peak. Head into Miller Canyon. This is the Beatty Place right there in the middle. Coming on down. And you can see this, this lower edge here is kind of where we did our burning two nights ago. And this is the, uh, the blowout from Stump Canyon that ran up on the uh, upper edge of the screen there is Hereford Road. And the other finger there, of course, is the day that the, this is Ash Canyon, and that was the blowout that happened on Tuesday. And there it is, the, the, the fire and the fly around. 
and, and I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell our mapping people you were duly impressed. So, all right, thank you. And with that, um, maybe we'll get uh, the actual latest information from our operations chief, Mark Goler. You can put the briefing on that. Okay. Just came down from, from flying and wanted to get the latest and greatest to, as to where the actual fire boundary was and what the activity was looking like. And so Greg's going to put up our briefing map, and I'll be able to show you where the most majority of the activity is and kind of tell you what our control efforts are at those points. And so once we get that up, it'll be a little bit easier to explain. Okay, going off the front side in Miller Canyon, which Miller Peak, in this area, just below Miller Peak, and if anybody's familiar with the Beatty's bread and, bed and breakfast, which is up at the very end of Miller Canyon. The fire, we've held it in check up there. We did some good burnout operations on night before last, and we were able to hold those yesterday. We did have one slop over across the line, one spot fire, which we caught. Uh, took a lot of work from the heavy air tankers and the helicopters, and we had crews on the ground that continued to work on that throughout the day, and we were able to pick that up at 20 to 25 acres. We kept it in check overnight, and then throughout the day today, we worked on this activity that was here in Miller Peak, just coming off, and our, our intent is to limit the growth of the fire coming down into the bottom of the canyon. Because as we've seen over the previous days, that once the fire makes, is well established in the bottom of the canyon, the heat builds and then overcomes the influence of the wind and it'll blow right out of the bottom. So throughout the course of the day, we've worked this very hard in order to keep that in check. And now that the sun is starting to go down, the canyon is now sheltered from the sunlight and starting to cool off, which is to our, our benefit. So we've held that another day, which is a great accomplishment. The one th thank you. There's, there's been some phenomenal coordination on the ground between the, the local forces, uh, Sierra Vista Fire Department, Fry Fire Department, and all, I can't even begin to mention all the others in the area that we've, we've worked on, on, especially out here and in the, on the fire yesterday. But we really have concentrated efforts trying to hold this. Now, not to say we're not doing anything else, because we are. We're buying time, and that is very critical with the fuels as dry as they are. Our fire, or yesterday the fire was started with uh, the fire out on Fort Huachuca from a dozer, which as they were building line, cleaning up, a spark from the blade on the rocks started a fire. We also did the same thing yesterday. We started four fires with our dozer. Fortunately, we had type six engines very close and some other things that were right there with it that were able to stop those, and then the dozer made some lines around it, and that was along the edge of the Highway 92 as they built some line there actually farther up this direction. So today, after continuing to build line across from Miller Canyon, coming across toward the mouth of Ramsey, we also were able to get up car, the car road up to the car reef, and from the very first really tight switchback, which I can't see, oh, right there. From right there, we were able to come around, tie a line, and come all the way down the peak, or the ridge on the west side of Miller Canyon. That's almost all the way down to Highway 92 now. So we've got some really good lines established there. Also, from that point, we're going down and coming this way with the dozer line as well in order to minimize the acreage lost in there. Also, while we did that, bearing in mind that yesterday the humidity bottomed out at 12%, Today, the humidity was in the single digits, so we are extremely careful with our dozer operations. Just about anything right now, when you get a spark or some sort of a, an errant flame or catalytic converter, anything like that, can start the grass on fire. So what we did to, in order to minimize the chance that we would start a fire with our dozers was to send crews immediately around the area with the dozer with backpack pumps, because this was not accessible by engines. So they followed right along with the dozer, kind of like little ants falling along beside it. And then we also had a protocol established that as the heavy helicopters continued to work this area at Miller Peak, we took the, we told the air attack that should our task force leader call 
it was a critical need and they would immediately divert a heavy helitanker over to, to suppress any type of start that we might have from the dozers. So we put some redundant things in effect there so that if we did start a fire with our dozers as we constructed line, we'd be able to take care of it. So that's the majority of the activity today in Miller Canyon and along from Car, Creek, or Car Canyon. Really good work, it's very, very tough terrain and the guys have done a very good job to get those lines established and are continuing to work on them. Another thing that continued as we went from Car Canyon, they are really making a concerted effort to try to make it to the Fort Huachuca boundary today with our dozer. We have a couple others that are working and they're working above the structures. The other night, I apologize, I said my little box for the fire was gonna include Ramsey, you know, just north of Ramsey Canyon, which I it probably inferred that it was Ramsey Road. That's not the case. We're not going that far. We're, we're skirting the base of these peaks or the, as the, the foothills go up, we're skirting the base around the base with our dozers and building a road, basically a road with the dozers there. And they're cutting across and trying to tie in with Fort Huachuca and then into their boundary road and into some of the, the fuels breaks that are the military is working on over there. So we're really starting to come together. We're turning the corner, which is great. The work we did in Miller Canyon is buying us time in order to get some plans in place. Now, we're not giving up on the fact that there may be a route that we might take across from around Miller, and we've, we've tying into local knowledge. We're asking the guys that live here, that work here, that hunt here, and asking how we could possibly go from car or from around Miller and find a trail that makes it across. And so far we've been unsuccessful. There's a couple of things that are kind of working against us at this point. As Greg mentioned on the backside of Montezuma Pass, and in particular Copper Canyon, and as we go a little farther west, I believe it's Sutherland Canyon, or Oversight Canyon, I'm, I'm sorry. There's some activity where it's old growth, conifer timber, and from what I understand from Bill Wilcox, a local guy, it hadn't burned in 100 years. Well, the fire is, has slopped into that and it's working its way down the stringers of timber. You'll get some rollout from some of the embers and some of the coals. It'll make it or it'll spot into the bottom of the next stringer and it's racing to the top of the hill, at the top of the peak. And that's what we've seen today a number of times. And just as I came back from flying, we had some pretty good activity. Also, there's a little peak just west or between Sutherland and Oversight can or I'm sorry, Oversight and Copper, I think it's Sutherland Peak. There's a little peak, there's two peaks, and it's made it up to one of those. So that's kind of starting to close options as far as making it across from Carr or Miller to tie in with Montezuma Road or Forest Road 61 on the south. But we're still not giving up, we're still looking. If there's any way possible that we can do that, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we try. And one of the things we look for is a change in the weather. And sometimes the weather changes can be bad, sometimes they can be good. So if we get a very good change in weather, then we will certainly try to exhaust all possible options in making it across and minimize what we might have to do over in this area. One of the other things that we also looked at today as well, Ramsey Canyon is a, is a very unique place and not to mention all the other canyons in the area, just beautiful country. With the Nature Conservancy and several bed and breakfasts, they're in a very tight spot. Lots of really nice old hardwood trees. There's some uh, memorial trees in there that we, we looked at. We're looking at ways that we can kind of minimize the impacts before the fire gets there. We've got time. Again, we're, we're, a lot of our actions that we're doing are trying to buy time. And we sent one of our firefighters that we've brought in, Stu Hoyt, and uh, Drew Leindecker as well, have gone up and started assessing the fuels and doing, got a plan in place that we can start constructing lines in there, minimum impact, and to try to lessen any type of impact that comes in here, as we've been doing here with Miller and also in Car now. So we're, we're getting that plan in place. We're looking at the future, the next several days of what the weather's gonna do to us and how we might facilitate minimizing impact there as well. Going back to the southern side of the fire, we've scouted out roads and how we might make it around in the event that we have to go all the way to Sawmill Canyon. We've had one of our employees, uh, one of our division supervisors, Scott Shrink, has looked at that. He's uh, 
he says it's very doable. We can get into that canyon. There's some good ground in there that the backside we can we can pretty well facilitate controlling that. <clears throat> on the south side, excuse me, on the south side of the border, we flew and yesterday or day before the fire had slopped across the border again. And one of the concerns was, if nothing was done, would it hook around us? Would it outflank us on the east or possibly outflank us on the west? And as I flew over, I could see probably 10 to 12 uh, bomberos or individuals out there working to control that portion of the fire. And they were doing a good job, and they were really minimizing how much was there. And I believe probably by the end of the day, they'll have that pretty well slapped out. It's light fuels, mostly grass. And they were out there beating on it with shirts and various various uh, implements. So that part is going to be taken care of here pretty quick. Not to mention the fact we've got a number of folks down on our side of the border that are watching that as well. In, as we look out uh, in the slop from uh, or the fires that ran out of Stump Canyon going to the east, we've been patrolling that on foot and by if, our engines and also from the air, that's cold. We've mopped up some heat, but that's beginning to be not a factor anymore, as well as the uh, fires that came out of Ash Canyon and went toward our incident command post at Valley View School. Most of that is, is starting to get very cold, and it's uh, to the point where we're going to be able to patrol that and not have to have so many folks in there watching, and we'll be able to start pouring more resources toward the north end of the fire as well. So with that, that kind of gives you around the horn view, and without going into real specific details like laying hose lays along the front and more dozer line, uh, you know, all the nitty gritty, that kind of gives you an idea where we're going. And uh, we've certainly been, been blessed by the weather the past couple days, regardless of the fact we've had the red flag warnings. We're in a place that we, we've taken action. We're able to have close coordination with all the folks on the ground in the air, and uh, we've really made a difference in the past two days. So really appreciate your patience, and thanks for allowing us to be here. Thanks, Mark. Uh, now a representative from the Sheriff's Office, Chief Deputy Rothrock. You didn't want to hear me anyway, did you? Uh, before I go into uh, evacuation information, etc., cetera, I'd, I'd like to address uh, how the decisions are made to uh, release an area from evacuation. And I think it's important that folks understand that this isn't a unilateral decision from the sheriff's office. It's a collaborative effort from the different entities involved, such as fire command, uh, sheriff's office, and such as SSVEC. And in that regard, uh, concerning Ash Canyon and the Stump Canyon area, while those areas are no longer considered a threat to fire, uh, there is a significant uh, threat due to the downed power lines, transformers hanging in the trees, et cetera. And Mr. Blair will address some of that here for you in a little bit. So we're still unable to open that area for access, okay? What is open for access is if you can come in from Palominas Road, is Three Canyons Road is open up to Silver Concho. Okay. And we have currently pre evacuation notices running from Buffalo Soldier Trail south to Ramsey on. The west side of 92, on the east side of 92, we have pre-evacuation notices from Lower Ranch Road south to Ramsey. And then, of course, we're still under heart evacuation on both sides south of Ramsey until uh, you get down to the Three Canyon areas and Ash Canyon, etc. cetera. I want to let you folks know that uh, there's a lot of people out there working pretty hard for you. I was up in Stump Canyon yesterday uh, and met one of the firefighters up there in, in front of one of the homes that had been slightly damaged by the fire. And he told me how he waited until the fire was, I don't know, from here to the back wall. And he sprayed that house with foam and ran. 
And I tell you, I'd, I'd rather face a bad guy with a gun any day than that wall of fire. Okay. We've got a lot of people out here putting in 16, 20 hours a day. A lot of firemen, a lot of cops. We've got Border Patrol, Arizona Rangers. Uh, we've got help from Pinal County, Pima County, on and on and on. We've got a lot of people out here working for you. And don't worry about all the hours we're working. i got this great benefit package from the county. I get to work all the overtime hours I want, and they don't pay me for them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, from the Board of Supervisors, Pat Call. Thank you. I think I have the same benefit package that, that Rod does over there. It's uh, uh, just to um, uh, catch you up on a few things from the county. Uh, the county put uh, five dump trucks into this effort. I think they've been working primarily up Ramsey and, and um, and Car Canyon's trying to pull a lot of the, the brush that's being cut out and getting it out of that area and cutting down the amount of fuels that are available up there. We still have a number of graders uh, that, are, that are cutting fire breaks. Water trucks are up there and, and so on. Uh, I talked to the county administrator early this morning and asked him to start working on a plan to get some large roll-offs, dumpsters, up into the areas of Ash Canyon once we can get back in there and, and stump in some other areas where we've seen a lot of damage and uh, work out some sort of voucher system where we can provide uh, uh, free removal of debris and those sorts of things. So hopefully we're trying to look ahead of this so that when, when this starts to happen, we'll be able to help folks. Uh, also trying to cut out some other bureaucratic uh, stuff. Turns out uh, when your, your power is cut off and, and uh, SSVC comes along and turns it on, the county has to uh, green tag that. Uh, so we're waiving all those things, all the permits, all the inspections, so just bureaucratic stuff. But we're trying to think ahead and, and make it as easy as possible to get people back into their homes. You should know, if you don't already, that the uh, county uh, has uh, instituted a countywide ban on the use of commercial fireworks. It sounds like a no-brainer, but... Uh, <laughs> Actually, you'd think you wouldn't even have to do things like that, but uh, nevertheless, um, the city of Sierra Vista has done the same thing, the city of Bisbee, the city of Douglas. So uh, we're trying to just raise the awareness of people. You heard today that, that uh, just a spark from the blade can set this off, so things are really bad. Um, I was in Three Canyons the uh, last two days in, in the late afternoons coming on my way from here from Instant Command. Those upper subdivisions, I just need to reiterate that it's just amazing. People that were at the bottom of Three Canyons watching the flame come across when it jumped the highway, they saw this wall of flame, they saw this huge wall of smoke. You'd come up to a house, you'd go around it, and there was a puff of black smoke, and it just kept moving. There's a house in there in those first two subdivisions that has some tile damage. There are some uh, uh, slump block walls or brick walls uh, that are painted white that are a little black smudgy. That's it. That's it. The houses are burned around between houses. You know, the, the message is clear. I, I'm, hopefully all of you have read this already, but the message was really clear to me uh, that uh, keep your grass cut short around your house and around your, your, your out, outbuildings. If you live in a pre back area, uh, get that done. Uh, you know, uh, keep the tree limbs trimmed up high. Uh, certainly don't stack uh, uh, wood next to your house. Those simple things, that's what those people did out there. And they weren't touched. It was just amazing. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go out there, you'll see that. It's just, just incredible, which is what I did all morning. We're in a pre back area, uh, the lower part of Ramsey Canyon. So I had the morning off, and uh, we spent that, my wife and I uh, spent that, cutting up tree limbs and cutting grass and so on. So it's, it's I know you've read it, but take it to heart. Um, just real quickly here, I want to thank, uh, is Tim Cervantes somewhere in, in the audience? I don't know if Tim's here. Tim runs, where is he? Oh, way up there in the back, if you can see Tim in the control booth, I guess. Tim gave me a call this morning and said, that now that we've moved it to Buena, he said, we can put this out over Channel 12. And he and his staff have worked all day from Cox Communication. 
They're getting this information out on Channel 12, which I suspect mean, uh, has meant that there's a lot of people that would have had to come here tonight that are able to sit in a hotel room somewhere and watch it. And he's also, I think, video streaming this as well on the web, if I'm not mistaken. So in any case, uh, just one more example of uh, the cooperation we're getting out of our neighbors. So anyway, thank you. Thanks, Pat. We'll go with agency administrators from the National Forest. Forest Supervisor Jim Upchurch. Thank you, and I, uh, and I want to take uh, this time to uh, publicly thank our, our team that we have here. This uh, team that's uh, been working on this fire is a type one team, which uh, there's a level of teams that can come from all over the country, and this is the highest level. And um, the expertise that they bring to this is the highest level that, that can be brought. So they're doing an excellent job. If I uh, ask them to do stuff, they do it very expeditiously. We talk about trying to keep the fire as um, contained as possible, and they're really working hard towards trying to keep it in Miller and Carr that we don't impact Ramsey and uh, try to protect those resources that we're so concerned about. I know that there's crews working very diligently in Ramsey Canyon right now. A lot of good work by the county, by uh, our firefighters to uh, try to reduce the fuels in there so that if fire does come there, that we can uh, protect the important resources there. The um, the chief of the Forest Service was just here an hour or so ago, and uh, he came here because of the, uh, of the conditions that we're experiencing here in Arizona, and he wanted to express his support and his uh, concern for the conditions that we have and for the effort that's being put forth. He uh, said publicly that uh, this a uh, monument fire is the uh, number one priority of all fires in the United States. And so, <laughs> what that means is that whatever resources we need, we will get. And uh, so, rest assured that uh, whatever we ask for, for this fire, we are getting. And uh, we'll leave it up to the experts to ask for what they need. But I uh, just wanted you to know that uh, from our standpoint, from the, uh, the national standpoint, this is, this is the number one priority. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And from Fort Huachuca, Colonel Faulkner. Thank you. I just want everybody to know that uh, we are supporting, especially with the airfield, and I think we did, had over 71 flights that we were supporting out there, the water, the retardant. Um, yeah, we're racking up the overtime, but I can tell you this, that we will support OT ourselves to death to support this and to help all you folks out. You have my commitment and word on that, and I appreciate the phone service. Uh, we're doing a lot at Fort Huachuca, which a lot of you are. We, are. we are taking all those precautionary measures to cut back and to really hold that line against the uh, mountains, get it away from those housing areas that we have, because a, a lot of the historic are nice wood structures which don't stand up to fire as well. And we are protecting as well, and we're working our way into Garden Canyon to stretch that line out and to tie into the Forest Service so we have a clean line from the post all the way into the uh, Forest Service, and we will uh, continue that until uh, we are completed. And uh, I just uh, thank everyone and thank for these firefighters doing the God's work they're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. And now our representative from Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Co-op, Jack Blair. Good evening. Uh, just a quick update of what our folks have been doing. Uh, as soon as the fire started, we mobilized our crews. To give you an idea, they get to work about 5.30 in the morning. We have a really quick meeting at 6 o'clock. We send them on their way. They stay out there at least 12 hours and they come back. Uh, 
we then get together in the evening. Uh, they determine uh, what the status of our lines are, uh, our infrastructure. So it's a combination of uh, what we've reported and, and uh, what the Forest Service and, and the other um, agencies have done. We then make a plan for the next day. We put out a work order so everyone knows where they're going to work. We pick all the materials. They are situated and staged so that the next morning everybody comes in. We have brought our crews from all over our system in here, so we literally have everybody uh, that we can mobilize to do this. When you came in today, uh, and if you haven't, uh, our folks are in the back, we have a little map that we gave you. Uh, we will give this every day, and it's also available on our website, and we've given it to other agencies so they can get the word out. Uh, what we have done is put 12 different color codes uh, in here, and then if you look at the back, that explains where uh, in each of the 12 you are. So if you look, number was one through four, we've restored the power, and then it's got dates on the other ones where we expect to complete. And once again, the expect to complete those, that's if everything goes well. Uh, the good news is I was told that everything that was supposed to be done today has been done. And you'll also see some of the, uh, if it says under construction, that means we haven't been able to get in and uh, evaluate everything totally and put together a plan to do that. Uh, if you have any specific questions, uh, all of our folks will be in the back and we'll be able to uh, answer more specific questions uh, at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. And from the Red Cross, Craig Brelsford. Uh, thank you. Just wanted to give you a, a latest update on the status of the, the shelters. Uh, the, the shelter here at the high school, as well as the one at Apache Middle School, as well as the, the new one that we opened over at Bisbee High School, are all open, operating, operating very efficiently, I might add. Uh, the vacancy sign is out. We've, we've got uh, adequate space anywhere. I uh, might point out, though, that uh, one doesn't need a, an overnight reservation to stop in the shelters. Uh, what folks have, have, have found is that to simply escape the, the heat in the middle of the day and the smoke and to take a break to stop in and have a cold drink and a snack and, and chat with one another seems to have pro provided some real uh, therapy to, to deal with the stress that everybody's going through. Uh, just wanted to mention uh, one observation here relative to the shelters. As I've been uh, wandering around the town here the past week, I've received a lot of personal thank yous for, from, from meeting people on, you know, just, just on the street. And uh, on behalf of the Red Cross volunteers, all, all of whom are members of your community, uh, we really appreciate that. They've been working those same long hours as everyone else from the other agencies. But something that I think you really need to be aware of that I think a lot of folks aren't is this. The Red Cross is here in a supportive role. We're here helping. Okay, we've provided some, some technical assistance and, and, and things along that line, but these shelters the here at the high school and the one over at the middle school, both of these shelters have been created, maintained, and monitored by your local city government and your local community. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of that. Uh, the, the other thing that, that I think really has fueled this efficiency uh, is the fact that any time a need seems to have, uh, have arisen as the, the week has evolved, somehow, magically, innumerable Sierra Vista volunteers just materialize from nowhere. And any need that's come up has been taken care of. And the, I just want to state again that the shelters are running very efficiently, and it's due to the fact that it's your shelters and you people are doing it and it's very impressive so thank you one and all thanks craig at this time let's take just a couple moments if you have a question the two center aisles uh, we have two microphone assistants at the very end 
Those of you that wish not to stay for the question answer period can move out of the room and into the hallways. We'll just take a couple moments for some people movement here and then we'll continue with the questions and answers. <laughs> 